turn me to a superhero, yeah, yeah. Hit that pill, turn me to a superhero, yeah. Boom, my night is turn me to a superhero, yeah. Metro, do your metro, don't trust me, bro. Again. I'm on that flow again, switch up the flow again, yeah, yeah. Flat in the parachute, gripping that pole again. I'm on that all again, yeah, yeah. Can't get a cup, gotta get paid. King in the streets, y'all made. Spreading of the crowd, take it to the grave. Ain't having problems, I'm sipping the bar. Shout out to Dallas, my fuck is a star. Get rich, baby, take you to war. On your casket, shoot at your bra. Do you something nasty, roll you in a car. Get graphic, put me in a car. I get your brand new roller to mark. Three words describe Alex Sobel. I think you could honestly just sum up his whole personality by saying that he's from Long Island. But if I had to pick two other adjectives, I would say tall and unique. But in all honesty, uh, I know I don't give Sobel a lot of compliments, but he's a heck of a player and a great friend. And I'm just excited to see what he does the rest of this season and then beyond. Uh, three words about Sobel are fun, leader, and gullible. My three words describe Sobel. Interesting, funny, and a gamer. If I had three words to describe Alex, it would be goofy, extraordinary, and humble. Three words to describe Alex Sobel would be unique, comical, Jammer. <laughs> Three words for Sobel, interesting. Uh, sneaky, intelligent, and socially inept in the best way possible. <laughs> if I had three words to describe Sobel, it'd probably be rare, goofy, and one of a kind. Three words to describe uh, Sobel would be long, goofy, and... Um, thinks he's way better than he is at Clash of Clans. <laughs>
I think we should describe Pete. Kind, caring, and mature. Three words to describe Pete. Caring. I think he he's one of the only teammates, if not the only teammate I'd ever had, that I'd be willing to let him date my sister. So I'd say that's, I don't know, that's I think I don't, I don't know the word for that, but whatever that word is, he's that characteristic. And um, great style. Three words to describe Pete would be handy, well dressed, and fatherly. Uh, Pete, Pete's handy. He's always fixing something. Uh, some people are very solution oriented. Pete is problem oriented. Um, he's very chill. I've never heard him yell once. And he's one of the smartest people I, I know. My three words to describe Nash are entertaining, caring, and a leader. I'd say three words to describe Nash are responsible, a shooter, and superhero by Metro Blumen. If I had three words to describe Nash, they would be entertaining, outgoing, and passionate. First off, I'd say leader, commander in chief. Uh, I think Nash has done a great job this year, just being a leader for those around him, for the team to succeed. Uh, it's always great to pick his brain on the court, off the court. Um, he's just been a great person to learn from every day. Um, next, I say he's amusing. Um, Nash is always putting a smile on my face, to say the very least. Always uplifting my spirits. It's, it's honestly remarkable how he comes up with the words that he does and assign the most random meanings to it. But uh, yeah, Nash is very great at that. And lastly, I would say a motivator. Uh, he's making sure guys never lose track of the ultimate goal. He's always trying to make sure people are put in the best positions to work hard and to like be better versions of themselves with every passing day. Three words to describe Nash Goldman. I'll start with indescribable because I think he's truly unlike anyone else that I've ever met. Then I'd say funny because he just has uncanny ability to just make everyone in the room burst out laughing. And finally, I'd just say that he's a great leader. I think all these seniors have been have been ter tremendous for us this year, but I think Nash does an especially good job of really articulating what he wants to say and telling us what we need to hear. So that's just been huge for us this year. Nash, voluptuous, hilarious in multiple ways, and it's kind of confusing, honestly. Um, my three adjectives for Nash, he's the soul of the team, he's charismatic, and he's an energizer. Uh, Three words to describe NG4, adaptable, humorous, twin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got four for Nash. I've got uh, one full bodied, needs no explanation. Um, just comedy. I mean, he's one of the funniest people I've ever, I've ever met in my entire life, and I mean that. Um, he's incredibly stable. You know, he's very steadfast in his approach to his day to day life, and he's super disciplined. And uh, Iron Man. Um, he plays through a lot of, not just a broken hand, but a uh, broken femur, broken spine, and <laughs> broken ankle, which I have the utmost respect for. Three words for Lucas are funny, my guy, and... <laughs> <laughs> my three adjectives for Lucas, um, he's got sneaky drip, he's a calming presence, and he's really wise. Uh, three words to describe Lou. Um, one would be shifty uh, on the court when he's playing. It's like it's hard to stay in front of him. He's really shifty. Um, two would have to be maple bacon barbecue rub. Um, and then three would be he's the king of compliments. Um, even when you know, I, if I don't play well in practice or in our summer league games, he always compliment me on how my shot looked. And sometimes I would take it as an insult. Um, but he always finds a way to compliment people about everything, so it's a really good thing about him. If I had three words to describe Lucas, it would be diligent, genuine, and joyful. And then Lucas, chill, carefree, he just like doesn't care about a lot of stuff. And then <laughs> sneaky competitive at everything. Ah, so many for Lucas. Um... Shifty, on and off the court. Um, embodies the characteristics of a fish, perhaps. 
Um, last and certainly not least, my friend. <laughs> Time to talk about Lucas. Uh, if I had three ways to best describe Lucas, the first one would have to be easygoing. Uh, I think Lucas is very relaxed, very chill. Uh, he has a very neutral approach to life about him. Um, and I think that's something that goes great for his personality. Uh, the second thing would have to be dude. I don't think there's a sentence Lucas has ever spoken without including the word dude. As he's watching this, he's probably looking over at me mouthing, that's not true, dude. Um, and lastly, I would say close friend. Not just me, but I think everyone could agree that Lucas is a great person to be around on the court, off the court. He's a very supportive friend, and he's someone that you will never get tired of talking to. Uh, Lucas, he's uh, very coercive uh, multiple times a semester. Uh, he's convinced me to do stuff by saying I'm leaving at the end of the semester and making me feel really bad about myself. <laughs> Um, he's just my, he's my brother, man. You know, he's been one of my best friends my entire time here. I miss him like crazy. And I would say, um, somehow intelligent, doesn't really strike me as that, but sometimes blows me away. One story that I have about Nash would probably be during the, um, Rochester weekend. He's always wanted to bring light to a negative situation. I remember pulling into the parking lot and him, um, Realizing that the Chipotle was closed, but being in such disbelief that Chipotle could be closed at 7 o'clock. So his immediate response was, nah, that they're just conserving the light. <laughs> My other story um, is about Nash. Um, we were all at Russian. The whole team was at the senior house um, watching basketball games uh, before we were going to go on a road trip. Um, and there was a Division two school that just turned Division one that was playing Duke. Um, huge underdogs. Um, you know, and we were just going to watch it just casually. Guys were just sort of doing whatever. Um, and Nash came in, you know, shirt off, you know, sunglasses on, and he just was so into the game. He sat down. Every time they were on defense, he was like, sit, sit, sit. He was telling them to set screens. He was talking like a coach. I mean, every time they got a bucket, he was going nuts. And he just, I mean, he made it really fun. The whole team, like, got together around that um, and it made that night a lot more fun um, when he did that. I walked into the locker room and Sobel was just sitting there like the thinking man pose. Naked. <laughs> just. One, uh, one great story about TZ is uh, one of my first weekends here at school. Um, we were at the dining hall together and uh, he gave me multiple recommendations on professors, classes to take, professors to avoid, classes to avoid. Um, and we just had a really good conversation. We talked for, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and he really made me feel welcomed here at Middlebury. And, uh, you know, he tried also to explain physics to me and I completely acted like I knew what he was talking about and had no idea what was going on. But, uh, you know, I was really thoughtful of him, and he, he helped me out a lot. Lucas has to be maybe the most confident person I know in things that he's just an awful lot. Like, good. chess is one of them. I suck too, but like he is so confident, and he's just really not that good. When I first came to school, I was uh, I was told that Alex Solva was like a really, really good basketball player, All-American. Um, so first week of school, we head over to Old Russian, which is uh, – where uh, the seniors live, and we're playing cards, and I look under the table, and this guy is barefoot, wearing just boxers, um, and eating guacamole with a spoon straight out of the grocery store container. Um, and I just thought to myself, uh, this guy's definitely unique, and uh, I thought we were going to get along. Oh, I'm here, I'm here. I, I can talk. All right. yeah, um, in the semester that uh, we all took off. Pete, TZ, and I lived in Pete's grandpa's basement in Aspen. And uh, Pete and I both had jobs, so we were away most of the day. But it was sort of like just TZ's vacation. And I think he existed on three DiGiorno pizzas every day with ranch. And we watched more Big 12 basketball in a three-month span than probably any three people ever. Um, 
starting at the beginning of the season, um, one night I came in super late into the gym um, to put up shots. Um, I wasn't really feeling too happy with how I was playing. I was really down on myself. And uh, Lucas ended up showing up. And, um, you know, we ended up just getting on the gun, uh, the shooting gun. And we just did competitive shooting drills for like an hour and a half. And, I mean, he was beating me. But, I mean, just him being there and talking to me and me getting to see how he set up his shots, how good he could shoot. Like all that stuff, it just it really inspired me, um, and he really helped take my mind off a lot of stuff that night, um, which I don't think he really knew about. But I really do appreciate um, him for that moment. One time, I witnessed Nash make a friendly wager with with one of his teammates uh, for forty dollars, and he ended up losing the wager. And uh, Nash at the time probably wasn't very liquid. He was, you know, liquidity crunch, <laughs> tough tough market right now and paid the $40 in dimes. And I don't know why he had $40 in dimes, but he did, and he took full advantage of that. Before Sobel started dating Marin, uh, he came in the locker room and he had his first date with her that night. And Sobel has the worst wardrobe I've ever seen as a human. Um, and our team just collectively got together and it just is a show of real unity, dressed Sobel for his date. And our, our options were limited. Uh, we, we, Finished with pants that were about two inches too short, too short, and a crumpled dress shirt with three stains on it. Uh, yeah, another Russian story um, <laughs> going off of that. Um, I was happy to be there at Russian by myself, just watching <laughs> Gossip Girl. And um, Lucas came into the house and immediately started playing to me like, dude, why are you watching Gossip Girl? Like, that's a chick flick, it's a chick show. And within like the next 10 minutes, he was sitting down more locked in than I'd ever seen him. <laughs> like any little like gossip or I don't know, some, some, I don't know, some crazy stuff going on the show about like high school gossip. He literally would turn to me with like a crazy face. Like, I don't know. He was, he was very enthusiastic about the show. I thought that was hilarious. And eventually he got to the point where like, like five of us, like five guys in the house watching gossip girl. I'm just like, going nuts and he's on, he'd be on all the bus rides watching it so I know he's a couple more seasons left it gets better Lucas great show well done show but that's beside the point and uh, it's been a pleasure to watch him alongside you Lucas Hey man, don't do that. What you gonna do about it? 41, you're gone! What? <laughs>
Are you fucking? Are you blind? I should not read those anywhere in the country. You think you're writing a goddamn rule book sometime? Are you wrong? Double, 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 double. There, here's your answer. Green, green. <laughs> Alex, you're gonna get David. Literally, give me one second. Give me one second. Uh, it's just I need to, I need to put this. I need to upgrade this. Just give me one second. 